let us start. Well, uh, GBC was born in 2004 at uh, a regional ministry uh, here in Valencia, in Spain, that is called uh, Ministry of Infrastructure and Transport. We call it SIT. And uh, that's why GBC has uh, its name. The, the, the two, the, the first letters of GBC means Generalitat Valenciana, that is the name of the autonomy here in, in this part, in this region of Spain. Okay. Um, at 2004, it started, the regional ministry started a full open source uh, migration that was called GB Pontiff. And that migration included uh, the GIS and CAD tool. At that moment, uh, there was uh, no advanced uh, free and open source software GIS for managed uh, geographical information. Okay, the goal was to replace uh, closed source GIS such as uh, RView or RDIS. And uh, grass and jump was uh, evaluated. So both of them, at that point, uh, didn't uh, didn't um, had the requirements that the regional ministry uh, needed. Okay. So at this time, the regional ministry took the decision of starting uh, a development project on GIS. They put the name DVC to that project. The main goal of the regional ministry was to avoid wasting on, on private licenses. And uh, how they did that? Well, investing money on a free and, and open source tool. At that moment, uh, two main products uh, were started. The one called DVC Desktop, that you, most of you know it, <laughs> that is um, a GIS for indoor computers. And then another one for, uh, called GVC Mobile uh, in order to be, to be used in mobile devices. Um, both, both applications were delivered as GBL GNU applications, so they are free software. Uh, and also, uh, they were free in order to download the binaries the source code and uh, user documentation. Uh, we can we can ask uh, what for we uh, people who who work with uh, free and open source software know that uh, publishing uh, this kind of information, binary source code or user documentation, uh, it's an extra uh, task. Okay, it's not the main task of developing, but it's an extra task that must be done if you want to have an open source software. Well, what for? Uh, why the regional ministry did that? Well, the, the main idea is uh, to have a solid community or to start working in order to have a solid community around GBC. That's why they did that. Okay. They knew from the very beginning that the key or the clue was the, the community. And um, I'm not going to go deeper in that <laughs> slide, but uh, then we are going to, to review that matter when we are going to, to speak about the GVC community. Okay. They knew uh, they wanted to <laughs> build a solid community, but how to do that? How to, to build this community around GVC? Um, mm, on that moment, the, the GVC team started uh, in order to, to work in three main ideas, three main concepts. The first one was uh, in order to convert acquired knowledge into shared knowledge. What they knew, they wanted to share with all people interested in that. The second one is uh, working uh, on the idea that giving 100% and asking for 10%. This is, they gave, they published, they put on the net all the, all the things that they did, all the materials, okay? 
but they were asking for some kind of feedback from the people that was receiving that. That, that is what uh, give a hundred and asking for ten million. Okay. And then last, uh, they wanted to avoid that this knowledge uh, of the, the regional ministry, this sharing knowledge, will uh, be closed again in the future. Okay, that's why it's so important the license that DVC has. That is a GPL license uh, that um, uh, in some words is what uh, guarantees that, that things will not be closed again, okay? Well, on the technical side, um, the, the two main beds in order to, to build the, this community was modularity in order to make the collaboration easier and uh, have a software that will, will be scalable in the future. And on the other hand, the, the translation, the, the, the items about internationalization of the software, okay? Uh, we know that location in, in free and open source software is really important, so um, GVC has some tools in order to make this kind of translation uh, easy. Okay, the, these were the beginnings of the project and of the desktop software also. Now I'm going to talk a bit about the, the GDC Association. The project uh, had a fast evolution from its beginning at 2004 uh, to 2009. Uh, the user community grows a lot, the developer community also, and some kind of cluster of small and medium enterprises started to grow. Mainly this cluster was here in Spain because GVC started here in Spain, but uh, in some way uh, from other countries also uh, some, some enterprises started to look at GVC in order to work with it, okay? This situation made um, the, the need of a, a collaborative infrastructure in order to share um, more things, okay? Not only the user manual, not only um, a version of the source code, but a way of uh, for a way of make the collaboration easier. And also, uh, it was needed to have a group of people that we call a prof professional structure that uh, are people um, in order to coordinate each area of the project. And now uh, on the following slides I'm going to talk a bit about that. Well, so at 2009 the GVC Association was born. The real name of the GVC Association is Association for the Promotion of the free and open source software for Geomatic and the development of DVC. Okay, this is the long name. Uh, here you have the, the the website of the association where you can find a lot of information. And the main goals are included on its long name. Okay, from one hand promoting free and open source software for Geomatic and from the other uh, make uh, the development of DVC. Okay, uh, now we know its main goal, but how to do that? How to reach that goal? Well, the 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 main idea is to to have or to create a new business model. Vale? This business model will be based on on things that are similar to the GVC project. So it will be based on the cooperation and shared knowledge. And uh, the tool for doing that is to create a wide community net that will be working on GVC, okay? Will be doing business with GVC. Part of the benefit 
of that new business model, this new these business activities, will be back into the GV6 project in order to make it sustainable. Nowadays, the GV6 Association has uh, has three kinds of membership. We have the full members, the collaborators, and the unknown members. The first two of them are small and medium enterprises, and the last one are uh, another kind of institutions like university, ministries, research and development, development centers, laboratories, okay? So the, uh, let's start from the beginning. The full members. Nowadays there are they are five. You can see they are their names. Four of them are from here, from Spain, and one is from Venezuela. And um, on the collaborators category, we have nowadays 52 small and medium, small and medium uh, enterprises that are from 10 different countries. Okay. This, uh, the aim of that is that uh, a collaborator that is working with GV6 that is uh, getting closer of the GV6 association could reach one day to be a full member of the GV6 association. Okay. And then uh, the last membership, the honor member, are nowadays 34 and also from uh, from all over the world. Here, if you if you click on the on the name of each membership, you have the link to the web page of the DVC Association where uh, the um, collaborators and honor members are listed. Okay, if you want to see all of them. This is a, a simple map <laughs> where. Um, you can see members and honor members, okay? And the following, this one is uh, the one about collaborators. Here you can see that there's a wide group of enterprises from all over the world working with with CVC. Okay, this slide is in order to to explain. Some ideas. I'm going. I'm not going to to explain deep on that, but I wanted to show to you um, what we call the GV6 ecosystem. From from the left side, we have what is the GV6 association with a both branch, the directive one and the executive one. The directive one is composed by by uh, a um, general uh, manager direction, also a strategy area, and a member from each of the enterprises that are full member of the GVC association. This is what uh, is called the steering committee. And then we have the group of people that coordinate the different areas of the association. This is what we call professional structure. Okay, here you have areas such as architecture and development, or technical collaboration, or documentation, product and testing. Okay, one of them is communities also. And from the right side, uh, you have the the GVC community, and also what is uh, a bit more technical that is uh, called here GVC project. Okay. If you resize the same, the same ecosystem, if you resize it, um, we can see that the GVC community is the bigger part of, of the figure, of the image, sorry. And then we have the project and the association, okay? But the most important or the part where more people is working with GVC is on the community itself. Okay, let's talk a bit about the, the community. Uh, I suppose you remember that slide <laughs> that I said, okay, then we are going to talk about it. From the very beginning, we knew that uh, the clue was 
to have a solid community, okay? Uh, one of the first things that we thought is uh, what does community mean? Nowadays, there's a lot of enterprises that uh, talk about its community, but we wanted to to define it as um, as a community of a free and open source software, not only as uh, clients or not only as users, okay? We wanted to involve people on DVC. So we, we, we thought, well, what, uh, what community mean? Let's define it. Let's think about it. We are talking only about developers because we are on a free and open source software, so we need developers. But uh, they are the most important part, or maybe users must also be part of that community. These were the, the questions that we thought about. And one important thing is uh, participation, because we are talking about free software, okay? So we need that people get involved in in the process of developing this, this software. So uh, that's why we think that it's so important people participate on the, on the life of DVC. We know that every person has uh, things to contribute, okay? Not only developers. <laughs> There's a lot of other roles that must, must be covered in, in a free and open source software, and we know that uh, there's a lot of people that can contribute to that. Well, so we said, okay, this is uh, how we think about the community. We need to boost all this collaboration. But how to do that? How to get people involved in the, in the life cycle of, of DVT? Well, and uh, the answer is easy, uh, but <laughs> not so easy to, to reach it. But the main idea is to find the common interest on those people that uh, need or that use it for their daily work, okay? All people all over the world have different interests. Well, let's try to find that common interest on GVC. From this uh, wide uh, community, from this wide group of people, we identified some roles that must be covered, that are related in some way with the, uh, the areas of the, the project or the areas of the DVC association. From one side, we have the developers and the users. We also have uh, testers. We also need translators in order to have the documentation and the interface in different languages. Also documentation makers, okay? All these lists of uh, different roles to, to cover from the community. Nowadays, each of, of these areas have uh, a lot of collaborators. So we have to organize uh, the things that has to be done. Uh, in order to do that, we have the group of people that are in charge of each of the areas that I told before, that is uh, what we call professional structure. We also work in order to create thematic communities, uh, in order to, to help people that are interested or focused in some uh, specific theme of DVT. And also, we are working uh, in order to create geographical communities. Each group of communities that is created has a coordinator group. This coordinator group are uh, three, four, five people that arises from the own community, okay? This depends uh, on each community and on on the the number of persons that are interested on working on that. Okay, there's no uh, a fixed figure in order to say 
the coordinator group is two or three people. No, it depends on each group of community. And this coordinator group uh, is the the main reference uh, for each for each group of duty community. Nowadays, we have the here you can see the list of uh, communities that are organizing the ALSAS in order to work with CDC. Most of them are uh, Spanish-speaking groups, as you can see. But we also have, for example, a strong community in Brazil, in Italy, in Russia, or the French-speaking community. One example of thematic communities is the GDC campus one that uh, is focused on final projects from universities. Uh, I, I wanted to, to show this example in order to, to understand what, what is a thematic community because I know that on, on free and open source software when we are talking about geographical communities something that it's more easy to, to understand what it is, but maybe thematic communities is a, a bit, uh, a bit uh, difficult to, to understand. So, for example, this, this group started in 2010. Um, they were uh, most uh, Spanish universities that started to work in order to to uh, working on on final projects, okay. The uh, last year, so uh, in 2011, we thought that could be a good idea to widen that group and to to invite university from other parts of the world that were working with DBC in order to coordinate efforts and uh, starting to have more projects, not only uh, from grades, but also from masters or doctoral thesis. And, and well, the, the, the idea works. Nowadays, we have a database with final projects where you can find there you have the the link to the here the link to the to the database where you can find projects that some of them are only ideas okay that students or tutors have about something to do with CVC. Other ones are running projects that are on the way right now by some students. And um, the third category is uh, for finished projects, uh, and there you can find well the uh, a small summary of the work the student done, and also links to the documentation that they did. Okay, talking about the this community, it's important to to tell you about the tools that we have in order to uh, make people participate, okay? So here on the on the website gvc.org, uh, you can uh, download GVC in order to test it or to use it, okay? GVC desktop and mobile also. We have also here um a repository where where you can find extensions that are not official, you can find plugins that are not official but that work on GVC and uh, a lot of people use them <laughs> that are available for the, the community. Then here you have the the area of the community where you can find information about the mailing list, the way of participation, which are the community groups that uh, exist nowadays, and uh, and also some information about the 
the spreading tool of GVT. For example, the blog, the uh, case, the case studies or use cases on GVT. Okay. Uh, this is another website where you can find uh, the, for example, the campus database that I talked before with final project. You also can download, um, for example, images or logos or posters that uh, are made by the community or are made by uh, people from the association and then translated to other languages. And uh, the case study web, uh, web page where you can find more than 100 uh, case studies focused on GVC and other uh, free and open source software, not only GVC. Talking about the community, it's important to talk also about the blog uh, that here you have the the link to the blog, to the GVC blog. Also the GVC planet that is an aggregator of, of blogs from the community. We also have a, a Twitter channel and, well, a Facebook user, Identica also, okay, all the, the social networking uh, tools in order to spread what we we do here in GVC. Another important area of of the project are the the organization of conferences. Uh, this year we are helping to achieve um, seven conferences focused on GVC. Okay, we can uh, talk about local conferences, regional ones, and international ones. The local ones are uh, divided by countries. Right? We can talk about the Russian user meeting that was um, May, the last May. Also in, in Chile and in Argentina, the the Latin American conferences will be this year in Uruguay, which is a kind of regional conference because it's for all Latin American countries. We are going to have also the Brazilian uh, conference in October. And the last one will be in November here in Valencia in Spain that is the one what, uh, that we call international one. So uh, you are invited to all of them, to all the ones that uh, have now taken place yet, <laughs> and especially to the, to the international one that will be from the 28th to the 30th of, of November this year. Well, and in order to finish this, this is more, <laughs> more part of the GVC community. I know that this is a lot of information when you are hearing it for the first time, okay? And uh, many people tell me, uh, okay, this sounds very nice, I love it, but uh, what can I do as a person that is interested on in GVC? What can I do in order to collaborate to the, to the project? Well, here you have a list of things that come to my mind in order to 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 include or to try to include you on the on the GVC community. The first thing is to subscribe to mailing list. We have a lot of mailing lists uh, from different um, languages, so uh, you can go to the mailing list link and see which is the one that fits you. Okay. Then uh, you can test GVC with your data and with your use cases and uh, report us if you find, for example, some bugs, well, trying to report us from, uh, to the mailing list or to the tracker of GVC. You can also collaborate in translating the GVC interfaces, interface, sorry, and also translating manuals, okay, documentation on GVC. 
Another way of collaboration is writing articles or use cases and publish them through the website of GDC. Okay, and I can continue <laughs> telling things that can be done. So it depends on your interest, on the things that you want to do with activity that can then be uh, collaborated to, to the project. Okay, any contribution will be welcome. This is sure. And well, if you're interested and you don't know how uh, how to start, please contact us, and uh, we're going to find <laughs> the the way of doing. It. Okay, and now uh, we are going to talk a bit about internationalization, and it's Mario Carrera, my partner, that is going to to sell that item, and then we will see the technical demonstration of the software. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we're going to see now, we're going to speak about the internationalization of DDC. Uh, there are two main parts uh, in this section that are the uh, translation of GDC, GDC streams, uh, the interface of GDC. Uh, GDC is translated to more than 25 uh, languages. And there's a, an, application, an application on GDC.org uh, uh, where you can uh, translate uh, online. Here we can see the, the, the state of the every language. And uh, if you want to collaborate uh, at this part, you can translate from, you can review, uh, for example, from Spanish to English, because uh, there are a lot of uh, the English part uh, maybe can be improved. And uh, you can translate from Spanish or English to the other uh, language. Uh, and the other part, the other, uh, main part, is about the documentation. Uh, there are uh, two kind of two types of manual: the manual for users, the user manual, or the developer's manual. Uh, the user's manual is translated to, to Spanish and English for the 111 version, and uh, there are. Uh, other languages, uh, but the manual is, uh, is not translated completely. So if you want to collaborate also with the translation of the documentation, uh, you can contact me or uh, you can write to the mailing list and uh, you can collaborate. And now we are going to see the, uh, a short demonstration about GDC. We are going to see several videos. The first one is about uh, how to start with GDC. When you open GDC, you can see the different types of documents. Uh, the first one is the view, where you can add the, the cartography. The uh, next one is the, the table, that are the attribute tables of the vector layers or the tables that you can uh, load directly, for example, a, a DBF, a DBF file. And the last one is the map, where you can uh, insert uh, the views and uh, the legend, the north arrow, the scale, etc. So to start, we have to create a, a new view, and we can change its properties. We can change the unit of the of that view, and we also can change the uh, reference system. Here we have different reference systems, and after accepting, we have to open the the view. Here we can see three different uh, parts, three different areas. The that one, the gray one. Is for is where you can see the the cartography, the order of the layers 
is the order of the uh, where how how you uh, visualize the the cartography. Here you can see the as the big one. You can see the cartography, and the other one uh, is for a locator. We will see an example later. So the first step is to load the cartography. We can add uh, files from our uh, computer or uh, different uh, remote services. Here we can see the different uh, formats that DVC uh, can, can load. We can load uh, raster files or vector files. And now we are going to select two different uh, shape files. They are uh, about neighbor neighborhood and the blocks in Valencia. And here, here we can see the the two layers. The order of the in the table of contents is the order of the layers on the build. So the blocks are on the neighborhood. We can configure a locator in the small window and it helps us to, to move on the view. Uh, for example, with the left button of the mouse, we can uh, write a, we can uh, do a zoom in an area. We can change to the other one. And with the right button, we can move the zoom on the view directly. We have a, a zoom, and now we are going to see the the properties of the of that layer. We can we have the information of the layer, uh, the extent of the layer, uh, the file, uh, the type of the of the element. This is the scale uh, where the the layer uh, will appear. And we can change uh, the symbology. We have different types of symbology. And now we are going to see an example about intervals. We select the field area to do the, the symbology. We select 45 intervals. And we select the first color and the last color to calculate the, the interval. So after accepting, we can see the the smallest uh, blocks in uh, light blue color and the biggest ones in uh, dark blue color. Here we can see the the symbology, the symbology, the legend. Now. We make a, an extent zoom, and we are going to see the the next tool is the labeling. We can label uh, a layer, so we have to enable it, and we select the the field. In this case, it will be the the name of the different neighborhood. We also can select the the height of the text. In this case, 10 pixels. And after accepting, we can see the labels of the neighborhood. Now we are going to, to disable the labels again. And another another way to manage the the zoom uh, here we have the the zoom manager when we can say where we can save the uh, the zoom for example if we are working on this area we can save it as north we save the the zoom and if we move to the other to the other part of the view, we can return to the to the zoom. We select it, north, 
and we return to the to the safe zoom. Now here we have the the table of attributes. In this case we have eighty eight uh, records and every uh, each record is a different polygon on the on the layer of the layer. We have the info tool where we can get the information of the different polygons. This is the information of the attribute table. And a similar tool is the quick info tool where we can select uh, several fields, in this case the name and the area. And when we are with the mouse on the on the element, we can see uh, the information. We don't have to click on the polygon. We can see it uh, directly. It has uh, the name and the area. And now we change the, the other to the other layer, and we have different uh, type, types of selection. In this case, we can select by by click, by point, clicking on the polygon. We also can select by polygon. We can draw a, a polygon. And here we have the elements inside the polygon that are touching to the polygon. We also can inverse selection. They are the other ones. We inverse selection again. And we can clear the selection. Now we are we are going to select by rectangle, and if we select uh, the elements on the view, we can we can see the selected elements on the attribute table, and we have an element uh, a tool to move the selection to the top of the table. Here we have all the elements and the selected elements uh, at the top of the table. We also ha uh, can can see the statistics of the of a field in this case the area, and we select that tool. We can see the the mean, the maximum maximum and minimum value, etc. We are the statistics of the selected field. We also can measure distances. And uh, we can see the the distance of the last path and the total. Here we have the the bottom. We have the distance and the total. And we also can measure area. We can see the perimeter and the area of the polygon. Now we are going to see the next video. It's about the editing tools. With uh, from uh, on GDC, we can we can edit existing tools. Ex sorry, existing vector layers, or we can create uh, a new layer. In this case, we are going to create a shape file. We have to select the type of geometry. In this case. It's a polygon type. Then we have to define the the fields of our layer. It's a string uh, field, and we change the the name. In this case, uh, the name will be building. The next window, we have to select the the name of the file, the the output file. As we can see, the type it's a shape file, and when we finish the the last window, we can see the the console, and we can start. We have the different uh, tools uh, to draw the polygons. We have the polylines, regular polygons, etc. We are going to draw uh, different polygons. In this case, for the Different blocks, 
on the other photo. Here we can see the first polygon. Now we are going to draw a second one and a third one. We have different uh, tools for the for editing. We can edit the vertexes of the polygons. We can add a new vertex or remove them. We also can rotate, scale, move, uh, copy uh, geometries, the, the elements. And we have the attribute table with the different elements. In this case, we have three polygons. They are three registers, three records. And we can fill in with the, with different values. After finish the, the editing, we can see the, the new layer. In this case, it's a shape file. And at the attribute table, we can see the different elements uh, with the values that we filled out, filled out in, the, in the table. Now we are going to see another video about, geo, about uh, geoprocessing tools. From GDC, we have, in this case, we have two layers about railway, railways and municipalities. And from the geoprocess toolbox, we can see the, the different geoprocesses, geoprocesses. Here we have the different geoprocesses, for example, the buffer, lateral buffer, the difference. And now we are going to see an example uh, it, it's a buffer. In this case, uh, we are going to select the railway layer. The distance will be uh, 100. We are going to dissolve entities. So uh, the different lines, is, is we are, if, they, if they are uh, near the other one, they will, uh, they will be joined. We have to choose the, the output cover the name of the, the output file. In this case, we select buffer railway, for example. The name, and after accepting, it starts to, be, to process. So, when it finishes, we can see the new layer on the view. We can change the, the order to see both layers. And here we can see the buffer. It's 100 meters uh, for the other, for the two sides. And we can select the elements. We can see that it's one element because we selected the option to dissolve uh, entity. And we clear the selection, and we are going to to see another geoprocess. In this case, the intersect. So we can see the other geoprocesses. And now we open the geoprocess, the intersect geoprocess. We are going to get the 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 buffer from the buffer uh, uh, layer. We want to get the part of the different uh, municipalities. We, ha we only have a, a one a polygon, as we saw, and now we want to know uh, the area for the different uh, municipalities. So we select the buffer as input cover and the municipality as clip cover. We select the, the name of the output file. It will be a shape file also. And after accepting, it starts to process. It lasts uh, some seconds. And now we can see the new layer. If we select the different polygons, here we, are, we can see the railways on the other uh, layer. If we select the different polygons, 
we can see that there's a, a different polygon for every uh, municipality, for the different municipalities. And now we're going to see a video about the the main uh, raster tools. We have to raster file. Uh, the other one is under this one, and we are uh, we've as, uh, access uh, to the to the raster property. Here we can see the information of the of that uh, raster file, the the file, the the size, the format, number of bands, uh, the extent, etc. We can see the information. The next tab is about the bands. And here we can change the the different band in order to to analyze the the raster file. For example, to to find cultivation, etc. We can change the the band. We also have uh, we also can change the brightness and contrast, and we can see the the results directly on the view, the contrast, and also the, the hand. We can change it, and we can see the results on the view in the raster file. Now we, can, we are going to see the next option, the transparency. We can apply to, uh, opacity to all, to the complete image. So in this case, we are going to see the difference between the port in Valencia in 22 years. So we we apply. Uh, transparency to the to one of the images, and we can see the other one under this one, and we can see the difference uh, at the port of Valencia in 22 years. And finally, we can see the general tab. We can see the information of the different bands, maximum and minimum value, etc. And the next video is about the referencing uh, tool in GP6. We can see uh, the same image than before about the port of Valencia, and we want to georeference an image. That has been get uh, has been got from the newspaper, for example. We have to select to select the the view in this case, the view with the georeference uh, image, and now we select the image to georeference. It was done from the newspaper, and after accepting, we can see two windows. At the left side, at the left uh, side, we can see the image, the georeferenced image. And at the right side, we can see the the image that, that we want to georeference. So the first step is to add control points. We have to do the first control point, and we have to select the same point at the two views. So we need a minimum of uh, three points, and now we are going to select the first one. We move to the to the point in both views, and with the with the zoom control, we can go to the to the point in order to select it 
uh, better. So the the small window, we have to select the the point. We click on the view, the small window, and on the other one. And here we have the coordinates uh, at the terrain and at the image. We can move the point to the correct one. And now we have to add a new point, the second one. We are going to follow the, sa the same steps. We have to select the point, the control point, on both views. Here we have a building, and we are going to select one of the corners. We move the view to the center, so we are going to select the, the corner, that one, the point, and at the other window, the small window, the same point. And finally, we are going to add a third, third point. We have the point, and we select the same point in both uh, views. The, if we only add three points, they don't have to, to follow a line, because the view referencing uh, won't be uh, very good. So we select the third point. This one, the, the corner of the port, the same point, one window, and at the other one. And uh, when we have the third point, we can see uh, the, the error for the different points, so we can improve uh, one of them, and we have the, the average of the of the error, so the different points, and now we can uh, check the, we can test the view referencing. We can see more or less that it's a uh, good view referencing, and we also can can load uh, control points uh, if we have if we have the coordinates of the different control points of the view uh, at the terrain, we can load the, the table and we can we only have to select the same points on the image to view reference. And we also can export the table, that table, to a CSV uh, file. After finishing the view, refer view, uh, view referencing, we have the view and we have the new one, the new uh, image that is georeferent. We have we seen that it's more or less a, a good georeferent. Now we are going to see another video about the maps. As we saw uh, at the beginning. The third uh, type of document is the map. Uh, with uh, the map, we, ca uh, we can uh, print, for example, our, uh, our view. We are going to see an example from the project manager. We have to create a new map, and we open the map. Here we have the, the paper, the paper model, and the first step is to, uh, to insert a, a view. We have two views, so we select one of them. We can change the the scale. In this case, we are changing to the one, and here we have our view. We also can insert a legend. If we have vector files, we can 
insert a, a legend. In this case, uh, we have we can uh, select the the layer for our legend. We select the municipality, and here we have the the legend. We also can add a, a scale. It can be graphic and and numeric scale. We can choose the interval. In this case, we change the interval. And we can configure another possibilities. And here we have the, the scale. We can move the the element. And now we're going to see we can insert uh, points, rectangles, circles, etc. We are inserting a, a rectangle. We can change the background color, the border, etc. Now we are going to insert, a, insert a, a text. It will be the title of the map. We will write the, the name and we can change the font size. For example, 70. And we can, we have the, the title of our map. We also can, can insert a north arrow. We have different uh, types of north arrows. Here we have the different types. And we have to select the view because if we move the, if we rotate the view, the north arrow will rotate too. So, and finally, we can insert an image. We have to access to the, our computer. To our computer and we select the, the image to add on the map. So we have the BBC logo. And finally, when we when we finish uh, our map, we have different uh, ways to to export. We can export to PDF file, to a PDF file, also to a PostScript file, and finally we can print on uh, to our printer. So it will be. It w uh, would be the result. Uh, uh, there are uh, different uh, extensions for GBC. For example, the publishing spec extension, network extension, the 3D extension, and we are going to see an example about the 3D extension. In this case, we, when we have the the 3D extension installed on GBC, we can see two new documents. Uh, we have the 3D view and we have the animation. We have to create a new 3D view and there are two different types. We can create an spherical view and a flat view. And we also can change the vertical saturation. So after accepting, we have to open the, the new view. And here we have the new 3D view, so we can we can see the compass on the view, and we are going to add a new layer. Uh, now we now we are going to see a a new type of file uh, of. Uh, it's not a file, it's a remote service. GPC can load a web map service. So we are connecting to a, a server here in Spain. It's about the, the area of the photo, a national plan in Spain. We, can select, we have to select the, the layer and 
we have to select the format, it, it will be an image, and the reference system, the same of the of the view. Here we can see the the web map service, and now we are going to see to load another layer. It's a, it will be a a shape file. It's a 2D 2D layer. It's about constructions, constructions in constructions in Spain in Valencia. We can rasterize the layer, or we can change the the height. In this case, 10 meters. The layer will be 10 meters on the other photo. It's loading the, the the new layer and zoom to the layer. And here we we can see the the auto photo and the the new layer. We can move on the on the on the window on the view. Sorry, and we can see the north. We can rotate the view. And here we can see that the the constructions uh, shape file is a a 2D to the to layer, and we are going to see uh, the extraction the extrusion uh, tool. We access to the properties. And here we can see that in the symbology tab, we can see the extraction. We have to select the the field. In this case, the number of floors. For example, the level of, of extraction will be. We have to select. We we have we have to select. We select the level. In this case, we select three because uh, every floor is three meters high, uh, more or less. And after accepting, now is it starts uh, to process. It uh, it, la it lasts uh, some seconds now. And we are going to see the, the extrusion on the 2D view, on the 2D layer. Sorry. Here we can see the the building on the 3D uh, extension. The different buildings with the height of every one, and the origin was a a 2D uh, layer. And that's an example about one of the extensions of GBC. Well, thank you very much. And uh, now Victoria uh, is going to uh, to answer some of the questions of the uh, the chat. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Mario. Now I'm, I'm going to, to make some comments on on question that you have made on the chat to Manuel. Okay, the the first thing I want to to tell you is about uh, training options because um, some of you ask for uh, training documentation. And, and well, here I have to say that uh, we have uh, different options. Okay, the first one could be uh, self-training. So the person that wants to know a bit more about GVC can uh, go to the GVC website. Here, uh, I'm going to show you where you can find in in your browser. Okay, if if we go to the main website of the GVC of the GVC website, we have here uh, user documentation. Here at the bottom, I'm going to open that page. 
and uh, we have a section that is called learning so we click here go to learning and uh, you have a list of courses that from one hand are made under the GDC project direction so they are uh, a bit more official if you want to <laughs> to to say it and um, we also have courses from the the community here okay provided by the community so you can see that they are viable in different uh, languages so which one can choose the, the best it is this is self training and then we have uh, training services that are through the GDC Association. They can be online training from the, sorry, <laughs> from here you have the logo of the GDC training webpage. I'm going to open it. I'm going to change it to English. And here you have the information about different courses uh, for development and for uh, users, um, for users, person. Aquí, um, sorry, <laughs> here you can see that some of them are in Spanish, for example, here we have a basic course in English, also uh, I know that there's one of it in Italian that I can't find now. <laughs> but um, usually the first approach is to have uh, the course, the materials in, in Spanish and then we are uh, step by step translating it into English and preparing it uh, for, for English speaking people. And also, this is the online option. Uh, and also, we have on-site uh, courses that uh, can be prepared from one uh, company from the association. So, if you are interested in on-site courses, uh, get in contact with us, and we can explain you the the way of organizing this kind of of on-site course, okay? Well, then I want to, to to talk a bit about uh, some plugins that you have uh, on the chat. One of them is the network plugin that uh, before starting, <laughs> before three, uh, three o'clock, <laughs> somebody uh, asked about the network plugin. I I have to tell that it is available in order to to install it on the last version of DVC, the version 1.11. That uh, and I I can tell you something that you can do with this network plugin. For example, you can uh, create the topology needed in order to work with a network. So you start your project with a line uh, with data that are lines, okay, that are not connected uh, between them. So you can create the topology and then um, calculate some uh, features like minimum path between stops. You select the stops in, in the view and then uh, calculate the minimum path. You can also uh, apply connectivity to some uh, path of the of the of your network. Also, you can uh, create uh, origin destiny matrices from uh, a group of origin points and to a group of destiny points. You can calculate service areas and etc. Okay, the, the the network plugin has a lot of features 
in order to manage network. This, um, this plugin is also available from the add-on manager. The, the last version of GV6 has a plugin that is called add-on manager that is in order to simplify the way of installing uh, new plugins to GV6. So if you go through the menu to add-on manager and then you click on the plugin that you are interested for, for example, the network one, GV6 will guide you in order to install it and to have it ready to use on your directive version. Okay. Then another question was about the publishing plugin. Um, GV6, Mario uh, showed you a lot of features that were, um, were focused on on local data, data that uh, you have on your computer, okay? But uh, DVC uh, also has also the capability of connecting to SDI, to spatial data infrastructure, in order to load um, data that is on, uh, on servers that are on the net and through some protocols like web map service, web feature service, web coverage service can load that, that data to DVC. Well, DVC also can publish uh, information data that you have on the on your view. <coughs> Sorry, can publish it through um, a plugin that is called the publishing plugin. Okay. This plugin, uh, what it does is to connect to <coughs> map server or geo server or degree, for example, in order to uh, create the, the files that are needed in order to load the, this data um, through the, the map server. So after that process, um, you can load this data from the extension web map service, for example, of DVC. Okay, it's, uh, thanks to this plugin, it's easier to, to publish information on the net and then you can load it or read it also with DVC. This a plugin can also be added from the add-on manager, okay, of, of GVC. And uh, last, in order to finish with the presentation, uh, I want to, to remember that um, the presentation, the slides, are available from the, the system, from the web system, so you can download it and uh, share it, okay, to anyone you, you think could be useful. And, well, in order to, uh, in order to finish, I want to thank all of you for being here, <laughs> uh, listening to us, yes. and if you want to ask more questions, or if you want to uh, contact us, don't hesitate, okay, and send us or an email or through the mailing list in order to to see the way of collaborating in the project. Well, thank you <laughs> very much. Bye.